Hi, I'm Dr. Voltaire Organo from the University of the Philippines, Manila, and my students call me Doc O. So you wanna be a chem teacher, eh? Well, there are some things you need to know before considering a career in the academe. First, you need to understand that in the academe, you are expected to perform three main tasks, teaching, research, and outreach or public service. While teaching in a classroom is where you spend most of your time, you also need to set some time for research and once in a while, giving seminars or talks such as this. At a certain level, you are given opportunities to mentor students as research or thesis advisor. You are also expected to contribute to the vision, mission, and functions of your chemistry unit, the department, and college through mentoring of younger faculty and participating in committee tasks. So your typical work week will involve plenty of planning, planning your lessons, reading journal papers, and writing article and correspondences, and of course, checking or crossing out papers. Now, as a teacher, you will be dealing with a lot of young people with different personalities and learning styles. So you need to equip yourself with some skills in classroom management and teaching strategies. This include storytelling. You don't want your class to be boring, don't you? So you need to learn how to give a good story. Chemistry concepts are abstract and your students cannot see those molecules and ions. So you need to make your lectures animated. Bring your classroom to life. Help them see that chemistry is not just about symbols or equations, but that chemistry is a fragment of reality. It is a part of your everyday experience. So you need to catch their attention. You need to project your voice audible enough for the students at the far end of the hall or classroom to hear you. Also learn some magic. By this, I mean be creative and resourceful. For example, will you discard a broken pH meter? Or will you use the silver wire in the broken pH meter for your next electrochem experiment? Or if your UVV spectrophotometer is down, can you use a smartphone? Learn to find good alternatives and know how to troubleshoot or fix things. Next, you also need to develop a good sense of humor. This will help your students relax even when their noses are bleeding and their brains are already sabaw. Lectures don't have to be all serious, you know. Inject some humor. Just don't overdo it. Kailangan respetado pa rin tayo. Char. Next, learn psychology. Understand human behavior, especially that of young people. Learn their facial expressions and body language so that you'll know when they are bored, excited, interested, confused, or even attempting to cheat during exams. Learn to give positive reinforcement. Be gentle even when you instill discipline. Find out when something is amiss or if there is a sudden change in your student's behavior. Give inspirational words as part of your lecture. Engage and encourage your students. And learn to listen when they call for help. 
they say that a teacher is a second parent in school. Well, to some extent, that is true. So sometimes you have to be the tito or tita ng bayan. Learn to be the responsible adult, which means you should not act like your students. You should be firm and gentle. You should be a role model to your students in word and in deed. So I'm sure that one of the reasons why you took up chemistry is because you had a great teacher, a great chemistry teacher in high school or college. So why did I become a teacher? Well, I found my passion in teaching. And like I said, teaching is not merely imparting knowledge. It also involves creating knowledge and communicating that knowledge effectively to others. So your role as a teacher is to guide your students in discovering those new life experiences. Teaching also means being a positive influence for your students and colleagues. And when you see your students become the better and best version of themselves, guys, that is the joy you receive in return. Teaching not only allows you to discover the invisible world of atoms and molecules, it also leads you to see the visible world with fresh perspectives. You could even meet interesting people when you present papers or give talks in a conference, seminars, or collaborate with professors or media personalities here and abroad. But most of all, whether it's typhoons, rallies, or pandemic, kung bakasyon ang mga estudyante, pues bakasyon ka rin. O di ba masaya yun? Uh, excited pa naman ako magturo ngayon. Char. Being a teacher also has its challenges. Not all students would think highly of you. They might regard you as a terror teacher, one who gives very difficult exams or mabilis magturo. At times, you also need to work beyond office hours for consultation, checking of papers, and preparing your lessons. And to some, well, it may not be financially rewarding if we compare it with other careers. But in spite of those negative publicities, remember that teaching is a vocation. Secretary Leonor Briones of DepEd once said, no other profession deserves the highest form of gratitude and appreciation than teaching. All of you will agree that more than a profession, teaching is a vocation, a passion, and a calling. So remember, teaching is the profession that creates all other professions. So, you want to be a camp teacher? Let me know. Write your comments in the chat box. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.